You're listening to Crochet Business Chat with psychotherapist, artist, and designer turned business coach, the crochetpreneur, Pam Grice. Well, hello there, crochet CEOs. Welcome to Crochet Business Chat. I am Pam Grice, here to help you turn yarn into money with therapy for your crochet business. I am so glad you're here. Let's go now and check in with our next guest. Welcome back to another episode. Hey, I'm so glad you're all here. Um, today I have with me uh, Cindy, Sydney. See how I'm, I, you know, we do this every time. Sydney, <laughs> Sydney is here. She is a member of the Crochetpreneur Business Academy and she has a question. Can you tell us a little bit, Sydney, about your business and what your question is? How can I help you? Hello. Thank you so much for having me. I am Sydney Hepworth, the Crochet Wizard. I am an Amic Rumi designer. Here's a couple of my makes. You can see some more behind me. I have been, so I started out as a maker and when my son, my, my oldest was born and then I moved to designing almost four years ago and I make amigurumi. They're my favorite thing to make. I am very much ADHD and so I like amigurumi because it changes what you do regularly. I really struggle with blankets because it's the same thing row after row. So Amigurumi is great because I mean, literally every single round it changes. So that's, and that's I a have, tip for our, our neurodivergent folks out there. Yes. Yes. If you have a hard time with blankets, try something that changes. That's a great tip. <laughs> Some people, Amigurumi gets them bored, but you know, it works for me. I love them because they change, nice. but these are part of a new series that I'm doing these birds this is my valentine's love birds this is my leprechaun birds so awesome so how can I help you today so um I would love help with um SEO okay. for I've talked to different people I've had people who explain it to me and for and I've I think you've talked like someone has talked about it in like a conference before but it's, it, for some reason, it feels like some big thing that's just so hard to understand. And okay. so I'm hoping that maybe if you look at my stuff and ex like walk me through it, maybe it'll make more sense to me because I'm very much like a, a do it person. Okay. So are we talking about on your Etsy shop or are we talking about on your website? Which do you think would be more productive for my business mm, that's a good question I think that's a really loaded question <laughs> it really is because they they work differently in different different parts of your business it works differently um why don't why don't we just talk about I can't really show because this is an audio podcast as well as a video podcast so I can't really show anything but I am gonna um just talk a little bit about it and hopefully make SEO simple um, not to steal other people's trademarked courses, simple SEO, um, SEO made simple or something like that. There is a course out there, which I actually own and recommend. Uh, I bought it for my VA, so I didn't, I haven't gone through it, but my VA has, um, but SEO, basically SEO is just a way of telling Whatever program you're working with, whether it's Etsy, whether it's WordPress, whether whatever, um, whatever you're working with, you're telling it what it's looking at. So when you create a new listing on Etsy, you're saying, what is the customer going to be looking for in order to find this thing? So what are my keywords mm -hmm. going to be, right? And you just write down just brainstorm. What are my keywords? So amigurumi. Yes, that's very broad. So then you do yes. Valentine's amigurumi, right? Valentine's stuffy, Valentine's plushy, uh, Valentine bird, bird amigurumi, cute bird, like all of these things that you could use to describe exactly what you just showed me. Mm -hmm. And basically you're, you're telling Etsy, you're saying when people search these things, 
I want you to show them my pattern. So you're also going to use a crochet pattern, right? Uh, if yes. you're selling the pattern for that item. Um, and then what I would do is I would plug that for Etsy specifically into erank.com or marmalade.com. One of those services that can look at your keywords and say, this is going to, like, if you just type in amigurumi crochet pattern, they're going to be like, you have too much competition. No one's going to find you, right? But if you type in Valentine bird stuffy, they might be like, hmm, A, people, some people are looking for that. And B, you don't have a lot of competition. So that's a really great keyword for you to use. And when you discover what people are looking for, what your how much competition you have you can select the keywords that are most important but they have to and this is really important they have to actually relate to what you're making because those yes. things like e-rank and marmalade or even google keywords you know um they can give you suggestions that are just like <laughs> you have no clue i'm not making that you know like it might say like crochet pattern and you're like no i said i'm not making that and so you have to like you it needs the human touch to say like this yeah. this is what really relates to what my thing is and you just do your best and then you you use that one keyword or five keywords whatever you're using um i would stick to one main keyword so valentine amigurumi bird okay let's just say that's our word you're going to use that in all of the places. So you use it in your title. You use it in your description, the first paragraph of your description. You okay. use it in your tags. You use it um, in your alt tags for your photos. So when you, on Etsy, you can add alt tags now. And on, on your website, you know, when you upload a photo, it asks you for the alt description. You type in, this photo is a photo of a pink and red amigurumi, Valentine's amigurumi bird, right? So you're using that keyword in the exact order. And then on, on your WordPress, again, down in your, you use that for your slug for this, you know, a Valentine's amigurumi bird crochet pattern is your slug. So crochetwizard.com slash Valentine and Megurumi bird crochet pattern. Then you use that in your meta description of your blog post. Do you use Yoast um, in your in your WordPress site? What is Yoast? So Yoast is a plugin that you can use in your WordPress site and it helps you with your SEO. Like it tells you, uh, you know, like, oh yeah, so maybe you should add a heading to title with your keyword in it. And you didn't use your keyword enough in enough paragraphs to make it really, um, to make Google really know what you're talking about. So using a plugin like Yoast is really helpful. I know there's other ones out there. Yoast is what I use. It's not the be all and end all, uh, but it does really say like, hey, you might want to think about adding a, an H2 tag, you know, having your keyword in your title, in your um, H2 headings, and in your paragraphs. So as you're using it throughout your post, and you, you're going to mix up the wording throughout your post. So you have Valentine's Amigurumi bird, and then you have this bird is great as a Valentine's gift. This stuff, stuffed bird is great for your Valentine's gifts. Uh, and you, you take those words and you you jumble them up and use them a lot of different ways. And then Google gets to be like, oh, I get it. This post is about a crochet pattern for a Valentine's amigurumi bird. And so mm -hmm. when people start searching that, they find you. And so then your blog post starts ranking for that keyword. So basically, SEO is about telling the search engine what your post is about. And so... Okay. The way you do that is you find a keyword that people are looking for that doesn't have too much competition, and you can use um, A refs. You can use um, Google Keyword Finder. You can use um, 
You can simply type a phrase into Google and see what suggestions it gives you. There's a lot of ways to find keywords for things. Once you pick it, then you use it in all of the places. And then you rephrase it and use it in all of the places. And you try and make it conversational. You don't, you don't look like you're just yeah. stuffing keywords and just using them in all of the places. But you, you know, saying it over and over again, being really redundant with it is what's going to tell Google and it's going to tell Etsy or wherever else you're posting. This is what this is about. So when people okay. are searching for this, I match their search 100% and you should show them this thing. Does that help okay. at all? I know it's a lot. <laughs> well, you got to do what you got to do to be able to be found because it's, there's a lot out there. So that's a, a hot market. Really? And that's, and that's why coming up with when you can find that magical keyword that's like, wow, a lot of people are searching for this and there's not a lot of competition. This is what I'm going to write about. And it's especially, it's a lot easier when you're writing content as far as answering questions than when you're doing a crochet pattern. Cause you, there's only so many keywords that fit the pattern that you've made. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and so, yeah. you know, trying to come up with, um, maybe even looking for what people are searching for and then creating a pattern for that thing. So if yeah. hedgehogs are the thing right now, I'm, I'm just saying hypothetically, if hedge, hedgehogs are the thing. I think they are kind of a big thing. I don't know. They yeah, are I think they were really hot. Following a hedgehog on Instagram. So I see a lot. Oh. But you know. <laughs> yeah. So as you see, as you sense, like something is up and coming, right? So something like, um, Remember, I think one when... thing that's becoming big right now is mushrooms. Those so cute like little the mushrooms. red spotted mushrooms, right? And then you don't want to create something that everyone else is creating. So how could you do yeah. that and make it different? Well, mushrooms and gnomes are trending, so you could make a mushroom gnome, Ami, right? So now you have something that's trending in two different ways, but there's probably not a lot of them out there. So then if you, if you're like mushroom gnome crochet pattern and people are typing that in because they're like, that would be cute. Um, then they find what, what you've created. So coming up with like really creative things to like hop on a trend, but don't just follow the trend exactly because everyone else is going to do that as well. So thinking yeah. outside the box and, and, um, and then, you know, of course the marketing piece comes into it then after that of you got to get it out there on your end as well to generate some of that excitement about that listing or about that blog post. Um, because the more traffic you drive yourself, the more Google will be like, Oh, people like this. Oh, this does fit what people are looking for. So it's kind of that two, two phase approach to getting out there. Mm -hmm. Does that help? I think so. I hope so. Okay. I'm going to do, I need to do more research when I'm, make a post and I think I need to add more words because I kind of with all of all of my patterns I kind of make a description of like kind of what how what the inspiration was for the pattern mm -hmm. I think I need to add more words there I think I understand now why people always have like a long story mm -hmm. of, before you get to the pattern because it makes it adds to the SEO exactly that's exactly right because most people are like I didn't get into this business become a writer I got into this yeah. business to be a designer and then they realize, oh, in order to get my designs out there, I have to be a writer. So same, that's the same, you know, with those um, recipe, you know, food bloggers have the same problem where they're like, great. Now I have to write this big, long story that nobody wants to read before I get to my, um, to my recipe. And it's for the SEO and it's also for ad revenue. Once you get, you know, um, a good ad network on your site you're trying to drive people down the post so that you actually make some ad revenue from that yeah making your job worth it so yeah it's really complex everything we do in our business is very complex it's not just simple um I think you know anyone who has a blog is a rock star to me because it is just so <laughs> much work you have to be a photographer and a marketer and a, a writer and a designer mm -hmm. and all of those things and so it's very, very challenging, but it's also rewarding once you figure out how to do it for yourself, because everyone's, it's going to look different, has yeah. to look different or else you can't get found. 
Oh yeah, definitely. You have to find your unique thing. Yeah, my my unique thing that I'm finding is no sew, making my patterns as no sew as possible. Like Polly right here. The only thing you sew on is his face. Nice. Is he has posable thumbs and legs and everything is attached as you go. And so that's my thing that I'm working on is trying to make patterns as no so as possible. I think that's smart. And so really marketing yourself as that mm -hmm. and sharing tips on how to do that and all of that stuff will be really good for you. So maybe one of your meta keywords is no so ami or no so stuffies. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, so you put that on your website metadata and you use it as your tagline on your website. And so you're building your meta keywords that you then use in every single pattern. So as you're writing about your pattern, all of your patterns that are no so, you specifically say that over and over again. And maybe mm -hmm. even use it in, you know, your H2 titles of like how to make this no so monster you know, whatever, mm -hmm. um, okay. over and over again. So that when people look for no, so stuffy crochet, stuffy patterns, they find you. That's the okay. goal. So is there a way, cause I know at the bottom of like adding an Etsy listing, you know, there's all those tags that you can add mm -hmm. on Raverly. Is there a way to do that? I don't, I haven't really found it. So Most on Ravelry you, pattern sales comes from Raverly. So I think, I think different niches do better on Ravelry than on Etsy and the other way around. So it depends on your niche, depends on where your people are. I think more diehard, very experienced old school crocheters are on Ravelry and um, a more millennial Gen Z folks are on Etsy. Um, that's just my guess. <laughs> but for to get found on Ravelry, you're going to do as much of that same stuff as you can, just because Google is ultimately your search engine if people are yeah. looking and they find Ravelry without going on to Ravelry. Otherwise, inside of Ravelry, you're going to use any of those, you know, as you're creating your pattern, it gives you different drop downs to use. Find all of the ones that work. So if your pattern has short rows, you select short rows. If your pattern has working in the round, you have working in the round. I don't know if no so is one of their tags or not, but I haven't found it. I did find more recently that there is an amigurumi one. Okay. So. so have that ticked for all of your patterns. And so as many things as you can find, tick those things. And that will help with your SEO on Ravelry. And then of course use, you know, your description and all of that, the same that you would on Etsy. I usually just copy and paste my description and then just change it oh, yeah. up a little bit so that Google doesn't get mad. But so Google okay. doesn't like things to be exactly the same. It doesn't like duplicate content. So if you have a paragraph okay. that you're going to copy from your blog onto your Etsy listing and then onto your Ravelry listing, switch them up, like switch some of the sentences, hmm. you know, put the second sentence first or whatever, uh, just okay. so that Google isn't like, oh, this is a bunch of duplicate content. I'm not going to show it. Okay. Good to know. And then always, you know, for these kinds of really big things that are really important in your business, it finding a reputable course someone who updates their course as Google updates things is I think a really good option. So if you want to, you know, save up, ask for it for Christmas or, you know, save, you know, if you're doing profit first, save up your profits. And then when it's time to disperse profits, then buy a course. I think that's always a good option as well. That's what I do for everything that I know I need to know. <laughs> I just go buy a course. Okay. Do you have any advice on how to um, find these, these courses, like, do you just Google them or I would ask, how you know, in, if something's reputable? yeah, I would ask in groups that, um, have people like you who are maybe using those. So, if, uh, for example, if you go into the crochet business chat group, you could ask in there, ask in the CBA VIP group, 
or there's another um, designer group called Knit and Crochet Designer Social. That's a great one. It has lots of um, designers in there where you can say like, hey, those of you who are rocking the SEO world, what are your favorite courses? And ask them. Okay. And, and you'll find people. Social. What's that? Designer social. Yeah, designer social. I'm, make, I'm writing notes because I know I won't remember all yeah. this. Okay. Cool. Yeah, you that's can do good it. Idea. And, and try not to let it get you overwhelmed. So, you know, uh, for someone who has ADHD, I know that these kinds of concepts that have multiple offshoots and multiple pieces can be overwhelming. And so break it down into smaller chunks. And like first figure out the, what's the keyword for this pattern? What's the keyword that I'm going to use? And you could even create a structure for yourself, you know, create a document where it says pattern name, keyword ideas. Then you do your keyword research and you say, okay, these are the ones I'm going to use. And then you say, okay, so I need to have a title in my blog post and that title is going to be this and then I need to have subheadings and this subheading is going to be this and this is where I'm going to use this keyword again and then here's a sample sentence that uses this keyword in a sentence and so then when you go in to create the, the blog post you have that right to look at so that you don't get overwhelmed in the process that may be helpful that you can use that resource every single time you're going to write a blog post or you can do the same for your Etsy listings and you know just have it written down so you're not just coming up with it off the top of your head every single time mm -hmm. okay all right I think that'll get you at least started in the right direction and yeah, yeah. SEO is one of those things that's ever changing and um, yeah, everything is I know <laughs> it's hard to keep up you have to be adaptable <laughs> yeah oh yes but you'll figure it out. And once you once you realize what's working, you can go back to your old posts and update the SEO on those. And you'll find you'll get some more traction on those as well. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right. Thank you for um, being willing to come on and yeah, asking your question. And um, before we go, where can people find you if they're wanting to see your makes and connect with you? So... Um I you can find me on on Instagram and Facebook at the Crochet Wizard. It's one word, two Z's, and I host a lot of crochet alongs. My I'm currently hosting a collaborative cal on Facebook and Instagram. Okay. The collaborative on Instagram is Crochet Wizard Cal. My Facebook is Crochet with Crochet Wizard, and I have uh my leprechaun birds. They're a, they're set with two with a garland and hats. Mm -hmm. This is going to be a crochet along in uh crochet along with us Facebook group. That's a new cow that I haven't announced yet. Okay. I decided about it this week for St. Patrick's Day. So you can so join the my Facebook group or my instagram so you can get in on all of my cro my crochet alongs they're super fun and i love them a lot yeah. and i've been doing crochet alongs for almost two years now i started because of the the crochet summit a couple years ago someone talked about crochet alongs and i've been hooked ever since nice. so Awesome. Okay. And I will put all of these, I'll put all these links um, in the show notes so that everyone can just click on them and find you and be sure to follow along and um, join the groups and join the crochet alongs. So especially if you're new at AMI and you want to learn no sew techniques, be a great way to start uh, along with other people who are also doing those things. So super fun. Great. All right. Thanks for being here and I will see you all next week. Thank you so see much you. for having me. Bye. Bye. That's it for today. Be sure to get your printable handmade business binder when you go to crochetpreneur.com slash binder. And never miss an episode when you subscribe to Crochet Business Chat on your favorite podcast listening platform. 
All guests on the podcast are students of the Crochetpreneur Business Academy. If you'd like to learn more about this biz boosting program specifically for crochet business owners, go to crochetbusinessacademy.com. And I want to thank you so much for spending time with me today. It means so much that you'd hang out in the studio and I can't wait to do it again next time. Until then, I'm cheering you on.